Greetings from St Bride's Church, Fleet Street, here in the very heart of the City of London. We're delighted that you're able to join us for this act of worship. St Bride's is famous for its ministry to journalists, and behind me here you can see our journalists' commemorative altar. We are aware as never before of the dangers that those in the industry face when bringing us the news. So our journalists and all who work in the media are very much in our thoughts and prayers at this time. However, we are, of course, here for all of you, journalists and everyone else. Do please leave us a comment or a like and tell us where you're listening from. It's always good to hear from you. And if you would like to donate to help support these services, uh, you'll find details of how to do so in the accompanying text. But now, may the light and peace of Christ be with us all as our worship begins. Jesus said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. be with you. A very warm welcome to St Brides to our choral Eucharist on this Trinity Sunday. It's wonderful that you're able to join us online for this service. We begin now with an opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. As we say together, Almighty God, 
Our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternally, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the glory. Glory Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, in the paths she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals she cries aloud. To you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the sons of men. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its fields, or the first of the dust of the world, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him, like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the sons of men. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, 
and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. If you're watching a video of this sermon on Facebook, you might be wondering why I'm recording it down in my study in the crypt rather than in the church, as I normally do. The last occasion I recorded it down here, it was because I was down with Covid 
On this occasion, it's simply because the organ tuner is in the church today. In the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. For those of us who work here at St Bride's all the time, particularly during the winter months, there's a standing joke that if you think the Holy Trinity is an unfathomable mystery, you have not yet encountered the profoundly baffling conundrum that is the St Bride's heating system, the complexities of which have beguiled the most eminent practitioners in the field of heating engineering for generations. Indeed, I am frequently startled to encounter one of our heating consultants, the lovely Ed, lurking unseen in one of the hidden corners of our crypt or in the downstairs boiler room, contemplating some aspect or other of how thermostat speaks unto heating control, which he invariably does with the air of true philosophical wonderment. You will doubtless understand why we now refer to Ed as our boiler whisperer. Why is our heating system so baffling? Because over the years, new bits have been bolted onto old bits, valves have worn out or sheared off or ceased to function. Nobody has a clue how or when this study acquired underfloor heating, given that it's an 18th century burial chamber, and the whole gigantic boiler-driven beast really does appear to have a life of its own, largely independent of any human control. We are, of course, very grateful for the marvellous warmth that it still somehow manages to provide most of the time, but I, at least, remain in terrified awe of its power. By comparison, the little matter of the doctrine of the Holy Trinity can seem remarkably straightforward, which is perhaps unsurprising, given that every year on Trinity Sunday, I remind myself of the very important observation made by the 17th century priest and poet John Donne, that properly understood, the doctrine of the Trinity is there to make the concept of God more accessible rather than more difficult because what it does is to give an account of the different ways in which human beings have experienced God and finds a way of trying to hold them together. Hence, we encounter God the Creator, almighty and powerful. God the Son, who understands us better than we do ourselves, because he came to us as one of us. And God the Holy Spirit, the power of God at work within the world. All are God, and yet all are distinct. Any language or imagery that we attempt to use of God will of course fall short. Mere human language can never hope to contain the full reality of that which is ultimately beyond words and beyond human comprehension. As one of our most famous and well-loved hymns puts it, immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. But that does not mean that we cannot encounter the reality of God at all. Far from it. We do so in many and various ways as human beings all the time, as people have done throughout the centuries. But returning to the Trinity for a moment, what exactly is all that stuff about one God in three persons all about. St Augustine had a reasonable crack at an explanation when, in his work entitled On the Trinity, funnily enough, he used the analogy of water in its various forms. Imagine the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit as ice, water and steam, all made of the same basic substance. The Father is not the Son or the Holy Spirit, just as water and steam are not ice. And the Son is not the Holy Spirit or the Father, just as water is not ice or steam. But, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father or the Son, just as steam is not ice or water. But nevertheless, they are all made of the same substance, H2O. It is actually quite a clever analogy when you think about it, 
But like any attempt to define and contain what is divine within the constraints of the merely human, it will inevitably, of course, fall short. A couple of days ago, I was reading about St Columbanus, an Irish mis missionary born around the year AD 540, which makes him a near contemporary of our own Irish patron saint here, St Bridget of Kildare. Columbanus had a profound sense of the natural world as God's gift, describing it as a second revelation, which was to be read alongside scripture as a way of deepening our knowledge of God. He wrote this. Seek no further concerning God. For those who wish to know the great deep must first review the natural world. For knowledge of the Trinity is properly likened to the depths of the sea, according to that saying of the sage and the great deep. Who shall find it out? If then a man wishes to know the deepest ocean of divine understanding, let him first, if he is able, scan that visible sea and the less he finds himself to understand of those creatures which lurk beneath the waves, the more let him realise that he can know less of the depths of its creator. So, Columbanus likens the unfathomable nature of God to that of the ocean. And alongside the analogy I've already used, there's something really important here. Because in relation to God, the more you discover, the more you come to realise how little you truly know. In that way, through contemplating the breathtaking wonder of creation, we are all helped to glimpse the true and profound mystery of God. Our Gospel reading from St John's Gospel today reminds us that the spirit of truth leads us into all the truth. But note the active dynamic word leads. If the spirit leads, then in order to find the truth, the implication is that we must follow. That discovery of truth involves moment, movement and change. It involves new understanding, setting aside old ways of looking in order to see afresh and with renewed vision. A God who was simply all-powerful and an almighty creator might exact obedience from us, but would be very difficult to relate to and surely impossible truly to love. Which is why we also need God the Son, because in the Son we discern the Father. As God is Christ-like, and in Christ we glimpse the nature and extent of God's love for us, and we do so in a way that is truly meaningful. Those who have seen the Son have seen the Father. And alongside the Father and the Son, we find ourselves reaching for the language of the Spirit, a Spirit that's active in the world around us, inspiring us, directing us, perplexing us, consoling us, recreating us. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God in three persons, but all part of a mystery as unfathomable as our human contemplation of the ocean, of the starlit sky that goes on forever of the delicate wonder in a hazelnut shell. A God who is unfathomable yet intimate, who is far above all else yet so close to us that sometimes we're startled to discover his presence is already there surrounding us. A God who is timeless and changeless yet burns in our hearts like fire, inspiring us to develop, to grow, to change, to love. A God who is creator and redeemer and sustainer. A God whose love and grace and forgiveness are always there for us. And thanks be to God for that. Amen.
Let us now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you promise to hear the prayers of all who ask in faith. So we pray to the glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Strengthen your church in faith, to proclaim your love, to worship with awe and reverence the mystery of the Holy Trinity, to teach, uphold, and spread the gospel of Christ, crucified, risen, and ascended. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In this world of conflict and pain, open our eyes to the wonder of things unseen. Make all lives richer in the hope of blessings more than we can comprehend. Support all who are displaced from their homes and families by war and disaster. And celebrate the kindness of strangers who offer food, shelter, safety, and hope for a future of reconciliation. Give clear vision and direction to those in positions of power and influence, that your people might live together in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless this community of St. Brides, all who, get, all who gathered for worship, and all who belong to the wider community. Make our hearts as open and welcoming as the doors to this church, that all might know your church through us in our daily interactions. So may we know your love as we share it in our families, in our work, and in all our relationships. Open our eyes that we might see something of the wonders of your creation and our tiny part in it, that we might tread more carefully upon it and leave a legacy of care and sustainability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who are suffering sickness and pain, and all whose minds are troubled or anxious. Make your love known, and support all who care for them. Hear the prayers of those who ask for your healing powers, and release to those whose time draws to a close. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive with care the souls of those who have recently departed this life. As we continue to hold in our memories and in our hearts all who we love but see no more. We pray for those lost in their line of duty, particularly journalists covering conflict and violent regimes. May their souls rest in the protection, peace and unity of the Holy Trinity, three persons and one God. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, the for the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, son our Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand? Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because you have revealed the glory of your eternal fellowship of love with your Son and with the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one God, ever to be worshipped and adored. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy, Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>